Well, it's a little header. Wilkinson, Hendry. Always danger when Hendry gets it. Hendry still going, still Hendry. Hendry! It's all going his way, that's for certain. John Hendry had been a hero of Borough's last promotion. But the new boss had wasted no time in welding new talent onto a team that hadn't proved strong enough to sustain a championship campaign. In Nigel Pearson, he bought a proven captain from Sheffield Wednesday to carry his message out onto the pitch. Behind him, keeper Alan Miller had last given the chance of a regular first-team place after playing number two to England's number one. With defender Neil Cox from Aston Villa, Borough broke the million-pound barrier for the first time. At the other end of the price scale, the experienced Clayton Blackmore arrived as a bargain-free transfer from Robson's old club. But another key signing would be on the bench. Viv Anderson quit managing Barnsley to back his former Old Trafford teammate. Robson needed support if he was to keep on playing. Middlesbrough's pre-season euphoria swept them on to a cracking start. Their fourth win in a row came at many experts' promotion favourites, Derby County. Well, it's Hendry in space here on the left. Derby with plenty of defenders sprinting back. Hendry still going. The half loose, and it's there from Blackmore. Keeper Alan Miller had only conceded one goal in five league games when Mick Buxton Sunderland came to Ayrson Park, determined to inflict Borough's first defeat. But even when 2 0 up, the Roker men found out a Robson team always fights back. It's Cox now, lifting it in, flying effort away. Moore, Moore, a little touch. Moore, what a terrific goal, Alan Moore! Well, it's all seated behind that goal there, but everybody is standing. Pearson, Borough are back, and Nigel Pearson. Three days later, Borough were back at Ayrson Park to face West Brom. Robson pulled up after this challenge with an injury that was to sideline him for three months. Robbie Musto came off the bench to score. The dependable midfielder was to become an even more important figure. Craig Hignett still needed to keep his cool to put away a late winner from the penalty spot. But by that time, Borough had also lost Nigel Pearson, skipper and manager, both out. Brian Robson was confined to the dugout all through October. Regular promotion challengers Millwall arrived at Ayrson Park, struggling to match Middlesbrough's impressive start. That's Musto working hard again for possession. Through to Hendry. No problem. He takes those superbly. Hendry in the middle. Wilkinson is deeper, Hignett is on the far side, Hendry, Hignett, Keller again, Wilkinson picks up the pieces, 2-0 to Borough. An own goal made it more comfortable still, and just one defeat in Borough's first ten games. So far, the goal scorers had a familiar ring. John Hendry, seven goals already, and alongside him, his striking partner through several hard campaigns, Paul Wilkinson again proving the attacking mainstays. But Robson wanted the Old Trafford philosophy. Nobody's place was guaranteed. John Henry and Paul Wilkinson started off the season really well. Uh, they were scoring goals for us. Um, I brought in Jaime Marino just to, to give us uh, that, that bit of challenge up there because Wilco and John had never had any challenge. Uh, when I came in, even in the reserves, we didn't have any centre forwards at the club. Um, and so Jaime's come in, I think he's, he's got great class, uh, but it took him a long time to adapt to the English way of life, uh, speak English, uh, and just get used to the lads and the way that we play in this country. Neil Cox had also got his name on the score sheet for the first time. The Borough's first million pound man was showing his worth. The midfield was starting to chip in with its share of goals as well. Down in the engine room, there was no shortage of work to be done, as the boss knew at first hand. Clayton Blackmore come in, he's done the job which I expect him to do from the United days. Um, Jimmy Pollock and Robbie have both had a really good season, they've been consistent all the way through. Um, you know, and they've worked very hard in there. Craig Hignett's come in with some very important goals, uh, and so has Alan Moore. You know, so it's balanced off nicely in the midfield area. 
In terms of profile, the only first division manager who could begin to match Brian Robson was Graham Taylor at Wolves. The former England boss has spent big money to get Wanderers back in the top flight. At Essen Park in November, it was second against first. Musto, Hendry let it go. Hendry, it's there! Hendry again. His ninth of the season was enough to put the Borough back on top of the table. The following weekend at Charlton, he was at it again, setting Borough on the road to another vital away win. And this is Hendry going in towards goal. Can he finish it? He certainly does. A great goal by Middlesbrough after just four minutes. And then there was always the other half of the double act ready to take over. It was Wilkinson who gave Borough another hard-earned away point, this time against the surprise promotion challengers, Reading. His goal came from the penalty spot, and surely nobody at the time could have imagined it would be Wilco's last for Borough. But what a contribution he'd made over four seasons. Brian Robson finally came back to active service at Burnley. Three months he'd been out of action, and after a shock home defeat by South End, Borough needed his inspiration. Just a quarter of an hour into the match, the manager's vision opened the way for John Hendry to come up with the goods once more. There goes Hendry. There's the first goal, and Hendry has done it again. Wilkinson still loose. White, they're all screaming for it more. Hendry, Hendry still going. But Hendry again. Alan Moore, who's... Moved across the front line and setting up Hendry here, and that's the hat-trick. Hendry, the man of the match in every sense now. With Robbo back in the middle, it only underlined the extent the manager relied on his first signing, his assistant, Viv Anderson. The good thing about Viv is that he not just keeps saying yes to me, and he will say, no, I disagree with you there. Um, you know, but that's what I need. I need people who are going to disagree now and again. And then the times when we do agree, we know that it must be a good decision. So Robbo was back. And at Christmas, his heroes were six points clear at the top of the first division. The skipper was certainly in the festive spirit. Nigel Pearson got his second goal for the club in the home win against Notts County. Just like Jack Charlton's Borough champions, success was built on a rock-solid defence. And at the heart of it, the captain. Robson had taken a gamble buying the big defender who'd been out through injury for a year. But the boss knew nothing could fracture the resolve of a natural leader like Pearson. Nigel's a great competitor. Um, he's got good character. And I think um, that rubbed off on Stevie Vickers and Derek White especially. You know, and um, I think they, be they have become better defenders now through training and seeing Nigel's uh, attitude towards games. And it's rubbed off on them too. Certainly, Steve Vickers seemed to form an instinctive partnership with his skipper. The Bishop Auckland defender hardly missed a game, and his consistency earned him a North East Player of the Year nomination. Derek White showed the value of competition for places, first deputising in central defence, and then forcing his way in at left back for an outstanding second half of the season. Keeper Alan Miller would be the first to testify to the quality of defence in front of him. At his own dominant form and the result, 16 clean sheets. Right back Neil Cox soon showed why Robbo made him the club's record by a Premiership pedigree with so much future. Battling Curtis Fleming forced his way into his less favoured left side of the defence till injury struck. And Chris Morris was also sidelined for long spells, but his international experience was invaluable when needed. The manager knew his team would always be hard to beat when the heat was on.
to clean the dirt in your bathroom, there's Jif Micro Liquid, now with its new improved micro power. On soapy scum and watermarks, just a couple of drops clean better than ordinary all-purpose liquids. So the shine is brighter. And it's brilliant on greasy floors everywhere. Improved Jif Micro Liquid cleans to a bigger, brighter shine all around the home. That's the power of Jif. Ladies, introducing garlic and herb crumb together with lemon crispy batter and the bowl. Look at those humps. They're so big and so tasty. Just look at all that prime white cod fillet. Chunky, new from Bird's Eye. You won't catch a bigger cod steak. Nineteen ninety-five didn't exactly get off to a flyer for Middlesbrough. Five games without a win and out of the cup. The team needed a lift. And they got it from Germany. Uwe Fuchs had arrived on loan from Kaiserslautern, a giant and experienced striker recommended by Robson's former England teammate Tony Woodcock. When Uwe got his place in the starting lineup at home to Charlton, he was an instant hit. His formidable physical presence combined with a surprisingly quick, sure touch. He got the only goal of the game against the Londoners. Then he helped Borough complete a memorable double over the big spending Wolves. Jones has come an awful long way, and Fuchs, and Fuchs, and the German makes it 2-0. After that, there was no stopping him, and the fans loved it. Cox having a look up. Fuchs is the target, Bryant slipped, and Fuchs could be in here. Has he got the control to finish it? Still with Fuchs, Fuchs, oh, that's coolly taken by the big German. Here's Fuchs again. Cox, chipped in neatly, that's a deft little header on, and Fuchs, first time, another goal for Uwe Fuchs. Good, strong challenge there from Musto. Now it's Blackmore out wide. Moreno, here comes Fuchs, hat-trick, three more goals for Uwe Fuchs. I brought Uwe in to, to really challenge John and Roko. Um, and Uwe did that great when he first come. I mean, the, the, well, he's done the job for us. Um, I brought him in to score goals and he scored nine in 13. Uh, so the lad did well for us. But the big German wasn't stealing all the limelight. One of Borough's less sung heroes was grabbing his share. Robbie Musto, that selfless worker in midfield, came up with the goal of a lifetime to help see off Watford. Teesside was relishing a new international mood, and Fuchs was enjoying some South American support. Great ball there to Alan Moore. Fuchs is in the middle, it didn't reach him. Moreno, he scored. The first league goal for Jaime Moreno, the Bolivian. But Middlesbrough could only manage a single home point against a Barnsley team who were emerging promotion challengers. March was proving a tough test, with seven games, five of them at home. When Derby crashed in four goals in front of a bewildered Essen Park, Middlesbrough were beginning to rock a little. Robson's team rolled straight into a highly charged local derby against Sunderland. But if the Borough boss thought he was suffering, then the Roker manager had more than his share of worries. Nick Buxton was under real pressure, with appalling home form bringing the threat of relegation. The game fittingly produced a local hero, a player who embodies the spirit of Teesside. Now Pollock on a run through the middle, Pollock with a chance here, Pollock still going, he takes some stopping, Jamie Pollock. The Stockton lad had put Borough back at the head of the first division, but it was now that Brian Robson's championship winning mentality really emerged. The time to buy is when you're winning. And on transfer deadline day, Borough bought big. Norwegian international Jan Arger Fjortoft, the first division's leading scorer, a stunning piece of business at an almost bargain, 1.3 million pounds. Everybody else sat still, and I just felt we needed just to try and lift everybody within the club. Um, and not just within the club, I'm talking about the supporters there as well. And I think with the signing of Jan and at the price, um, I, I think that did give everybody that bit of buzz. And we were covered in every area then as well. 
Um, so it, it just gives us that little bit of lift to, to go on to actually win it. But the new record signing had to wait for his debut. International duty took him away from Ayrson Park for the Port Vale game. But his new teammates showed they were also capable of finding the net, including the man who'd signed him. Robson weighs up the options, brings White into play instead. Port Vale have got a lot of men back. White in possession. Still with White. Square for Robson. Goal! Brian Robson, the boss, gets his first goal and leading right from the very front. A 3-0 win put Borough four points clear of Bolton, who had a game in hand. Eight matches to go, with five of them away from home. In the first half at West Brom on April the 1st, the team were looking a little foolish, trailing by one goal. But the second half brought the most emphatic revival possible. Robson. Oh, it is Moore again. He's the one who's beginning to look dangerous. And he goes into the area. Alan Moore tries to knock it across. Alan Moore again, scrambled in. A goal for Middlesbrough. And Jamie Pollock claims the goal which brings Middlesbrough level. Here is Alan Moore. And the cross ball. Oh, it's an own goal. And it's broken for Moore. And on he goes, and he's nearly wrestled to the ground. Alan Moore, it's three. And this has been a most astonishing turnaround, instigated by the young Irishman. But defeat at Oldham follows, then another anxious afternoon at Essen Park against Stoke, until Alan Moore again came up with a brilliant winner. Moore's moment of inspiration was perfectly timed approaching Easter, traditionally when promotion issues start to clear. It was time for the Continental Double Act to come up with the three goals that brought Borough just three points from three desperately tough games. Bottom of the table, Notts County at Meadow Lane proved a tougher prospect than perhaps expected. Enter from the bench, Uwe Fuchs. Sheffield United came to Ayrson Park clinging to their own promotion ambitions. But a certain Norwegian was still looking to get off the mark. A Fjortov flyer, but again it ended 1-1. Another team of promotion hopefuls, Barnsley, and Fjortov swoops again. Here's a chance at the other end immediately for Fjortoft, and he's onside this time. Shot and covering. Fjortoft the shot. Fjortoft the goal. Great goal. That's why they signed him. But another Easter draw. Still, Borough were in pole position. They hadn't lost, so kept ahead of inconsistent Bolton and Tranmere, the main promotion rivals. Two games left, including an historic occasion. April the 30th, 1995, and Ayrson Park staged its final league fixture. The club were determined to say farewell to 92 years of football in style. Borough stars from down the years came back to give the old stadium a memorable send-off. Names woven into the very fabric of Teesside's sporting history. The all-time greats were there, the dashing captain George Hardwick and the golden boy of his era, Wilf Mannion. The heart of Jack Charlton's 74 champions together again, while Tony Mowbray led Borough from bankruptcy to promotion. And from the nostalgia, the attention switched to the future. The fans' choice of name for the club's new home was revealed, Riverside Stadium. It was a superb day of spontaneous emotion and huge expectation. But through all the build-up, Brian Robson had to keep his team concentrating on beating Luton Town. Anything less, and Ayrton Park could face the dramatic uncertainty of the playoffs. Borough corner to the last minute of the first half. Be half away. Hendry was challenging. Pearson scrapping as well. Hendry opening up room. Yeah! And it's a goal! Middlesbrough have taken the lead. Hendry's shot. And Ayrton Park erupts. A few men square for anything touched down. It's lifted in towards Taylor. It's a goal. Equaliser. Moore, he can win a game. Pollock, he's the sort of person they'll look to to really push on. Pollock bursting through the men there, and White supporting as well, and still with White. And Hendry, goal, Burr, John Hendry. Hendry's second, and Middlesbrough back in 
charge. It turned out to be the perfect day on and off the pitch, especially as rivals Bolton and Tranmere both lost that weekend. Borough's professionalism had shone through on the big occasion. The celebrations were only slightly premature. Bolton had to win in midweek to keep the title race alive, but Brian Robson was nearly there. Orlikson will take the kick. And Shorten's first job is to pick the ball out of the back of the net. And both are in trouble here. That was the goal that eventually won Borough the title, denying Bolton the win they needed, and Middlesbrough were in the Premiership. Next morning, the celebrations could begin. The champagne was flowing. Brian Robson was the toast of Teesside. There was no tension, no worries, no fear of failure among the 3,000 Borough fans who travelled to Tranmere for the team's last game in the first division. The two men who piloted Borough to the championship could enjoy the game against their great promotion rivals. Unlike Rovers, who were destined for the playoffs for the third year running, Jan Fjortov got the simple goal that gave Borough a draw. Life was now one long party for fans and the players. Keep smiling through, just like you always do. Middlesbrough made sure they came home to get their trophy. The magic moment saved for Steve Pear's testimonial game. When Nigel Pearson lifted the famous old silverware, it meant the ambitions, the hopes, the dreams stirred by Brian Robson's arrival had been realised. Robbo and his heroes had taken Borough back to the top. I think as long as you're truthful with players and you, you know that's the way you are, then the players will respect that. There's just something about him in the team and as a manager that he just makes you want to play. I think he's just such a winner himself that he makes you what the team want to win. You know, he's so experienced and I've learned so much, you know, as a midfielder, which I'm sure all the other players have learned. Yeah, when he's on the pitch, he helps everybody out. And obviously teams are wary about him because obviously he's got good goal scoring record and he's good on the pitch and he, he makes us play football. The fight is pleasant. Uh, he's come here, he's promised a lot of things and uh, we've managed to be able to do it. He's been exceptional. Uh, I mean, like I said, even the, the senior players look, look up to him and he's, he's been a tre tremendous influence on him. couldn't have had any better back in, in what the chairman's given me. Um, everything I've asked for, he's given me. Um, you know, so he deserves the success. People talk about uh, the risk that was associated in bringing Brian up to this football club. It was a minimal risk. And when we got him, I thought he was the right man for the job. Now I'm absolutely convinced of it. This tribute to First Division champions Middlesbrough is sponsored by Northeast Ford Dealers. 